This short webinar is the Five Pilgrim Keys, Key Number One, Faith. Well, on top of the National Monument to the Forefathers is the primary statue, Faith. She faces east, remembering from where they had come, God's providences in their coming to America, God's providences in all of history, the working out of his plan. They literally saw it in the same way that God led the Israelites through the Red Sea, and she has her foot resting on Plymouth Rock. God is maker and ruler of all. Governor William Bradford said this on the pilgrims' faith and calling. Being thus constrained to leave their native soil and country, their lands and livings, and all their friends and familiar acquaintances, it was by many thought an adventure almost desperate, a case intolerable and a misery worse than death. But these things did not dismay them, though they did sometimes trouble them, for their desires were set on the ways of God, and to enjoy His ordinances, they rested in His providence, and they knew whom they had believed. This famous painting is called the Pilgrim Embarkation, and on the left-hand side you can see the rainbow is painted into the picture here. And the rainbow in scriptures has always meant God's covenant promise to his people. And so this artist, many years later, painting the pilgrim's embarkation, included this aspect of their faith. Well, back to faith, the statue. Her hand is pointing heavenward. God is maker of heaven and earth. God is working out his plan here on earth. God leads and guides. God should be glorified in all we do and say. All wisdom and knowledge comes from God, and God can be trusted and relied upon, thus the name faith. Next we move to the star on her forehead. It represents honor and importance, the high value on the intellect and mind. The mind was a gift from God. Application of truth was reasoned from the mind. Though man was sinful, God could lead and guide his mind to wisdom and truth. Governor William Bradford commented on his pastor, John Robinson, because in fact these pilgrims were basically a congregation that had this vision for going to the new world. And in this picture that I used earlier, there's two individuals I'd like to identify here. Their pastor, John Robinson, who never made the trip to the new world because he had the rest of the congregation to care for in Holland. Only part of the congregation went forward. And in the middle, holding the Geneva Bible, is Elder William Brewster, who was the leader of the congregation, at least the uh, like the pastor of the congregation, that went uh, to the New World. But commenting on Pastor John Robinson, the overall pastor of this Pilgrim Church congregation, he said this, For besides his singular abilities in divine things, wherein he excelled, he was also very able to give directions in civil affairs and to foresee dangers and inconveniences by which means he was very helpful to their outward estates, and so was every way as a common father unto them. So in essence what he was saying is Pastor John Robinson was not only an excellent Bible teacher and knew theology well, but he was a student of civil government, of uh, culture, cultural trends, and he served as a uh, shepherd uh, to his congregation way outside the boundaries of uh, what is traditionally called theology, but in economic effects, civil effects, and so on. And so he is a wise and prudent and well-studied man who had cultivated a fabulous mind. What a challenge to pastors and Christian leaders today. Just a closer look at him before we move on. So Faith has the Geneva Bible in her hand. The Bible is God's word to the pilgrims and mankind and should be cherished, honored, and followed. Its pages are slightly open, meaning it can be used. Pages blown by the wind, the Holy Spirit is like the wind and gives us insight into God's word. The Geneva Bible, in English, had chapter and verse for the first time. It was really innovative. It was portable, it was understandable, and it was the Bible of the Reformation because it had extensive maps and study notes and became the first English translation that was uh, highly usable uh, by the general public. And that's how their faith caught on fire and the Reformation spread toward England and motivated these pilgrims. But to have such a Bible was punishable by death. Dr. Paul Jaley has this great observation. The pilgrims believed that religious liberty preceded civil liberty. Religious liberty was internal. Civil liberty was external. So religious liberty gave rise to civil liberty in society. And so faith is the first key. It opens up the additional keys on the monument, represented by additional statutes. 
Those additional statues are morality, law, education, and liberty. There's a sequence to the keys. Internal religious liberty is expressed by faith that translates into morality. External civil liberty then flows from law to education to liberty. And so that's our conclusion on key number one, faith. My name's Craig Seibert. Thanks for listening.